Welcome to day three of our Teaching and Learning Conference for Europe 2021. Uh, this is the stream on client success stories. We will be in this, well, this stream runs until almost 12 o'clock today, but you can move between the streams. There is a second client success stories stream that's running parallel. There is also DevCon, and there is also uh, a Spanish stream too. So welcome everybody, good to see you all here. Thank you for joining. Um, the agenda is here for the day. I'll just quickly do an overview. So in about two minutes, I'm gonna hand over to Helga uh, Gunnestortic, who is going to be speaking about recording assessments in Collaborate. Helga's from the University of West of England. And then at 9.30, we've got Ian Henderson and Linda Wallach from North East Scotland College talking about their groundbreaking work with Blackboard data dashboards. 10 o'clock, we have got Embedding Universal Design for Learning at the National University of Galway. And Kate, Jane and Cameron, a student, will be talking about the work and the project that they've done there to em embed ally and accessibility. 10.25, we'll be taking a wellness break. And we do have a lightning talk going on at that time from EasySoft, one of our sponsors. At 10.45, we will have a panel on Learn Ultra course view with four people from different universities that are using uh, Learn Ultra from Harriet, Malcolm, Hamish and Bethan. And the universities are listed there. I won't go through them all. 11.30, we've got an academic, uh, Neil McLennan from the University of Aberdeen, who will be talking about his program of leading, le, leading le, leadership learning online. <laughs> Not easy to say. Um, he is the director of a master's program uh, where they're using Learn Ultra and he'll talk about the pedagogies that he uses there in the tools. Then we'll have another wellness break. Um, and after that, it's our second keynote. Hopefully you caught Helen Sharman yesterday for her amazing presentation. But today we've got Charlie Cannon, who is talking about applying wellness principles in the classroom. And he is a specialist in performing under pressure with personal resilience and well-being. So it sounds very relevant to today. And then Oleg will do the closing remarks at 12.50 until 1. And we have a closing game between 1 and 2. So that's what we're covering today. Each session will be recorded and the recordings will be available in the TLC Engage platform after the event. And after 30 days, they will be available in the Blackboard community area too. So if you want to share that with any colleagues, you're welcome to, or you miss any sessions, you can catch up there. We do have closed captions available for this session today. Um, and just waiting for the slide to move. Um, the Uber Eats voucher, so lunch is on us again today, and the code is there on the screen. The um, Actually, would one of my colleagues mind just typing that into the uh, chat for people to be able to grab that? Um, and thank you, Mark, <laughs> that's very fast. Okay, and at that point, sorry, I'll give you an, I won't take any time off Helga, but I'm going to... Um, Stop there and introduce Helga Gunnarsdorfik, who is going to speak about using Collaborate for assessments. Helga, over to you. Excellent. Thank you, Gillian. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Helga Gunnarsdorfik. I work for the University of the West of England. I'm a senior learning technologist um, at the university. And we're going to have a quick talk about um, the assessment tool that um, our IT learning systems team created for us um, recently, which is working really well. Um, I need to screen share, just bear with me one second, because I'm going to be jumping in and demoing for you. So, um, and I'm going to share full screen. So there we go. That's better. Right. Let's have a look then. So today we are going to be 
looking at um, what is the assessment tool that we've created and um, putting it into context and thinking about how it actually works. Um, I'm going to demo it so that you can see how we create sessions and how we access recordings. And we're going to talk a little bit about the support that we put in place for staff to use the correct tools, because um, with this tool and all the other tools, it's quite um, a bit of a maze to figure out exactly what to do best for the most effective and, le and least admin burden on staff when they're doing assessments online. So why did we develop something different? Well, COVID was clearly the final push um, that made this happen. It probably wouldn't have happened without it. But we were also in the middle of system changes. We were moving from Cultura to Panopto for assessment recordings. Um, we'd had uh, the academic year 1920. Um, we adopted the um, face-to-face -face group assessment recording policy. And we were working on the students own recording policy for Panopto um, when COVID hit. And um, that coupled with some of the assessment changes that we were sort of moving towards anyway in terms of more providing more opportunities for authentic assessment, um, but also to support the stud or students on placements, um, students that are doing distance learning and degree apprenticeships, which are quite a big thing at UWE. Uh, you know, th there was there were needs that that weren't being met. So while we were working through the system changes, um, there were we'd already set up all the use cases um, and we we knew which use cases we couldn't cater for with the um, with the systems with Panopto, for example. Um, and they were mainly remote presentations of various kinds. Having said that, there is definitely, uh, th th there are workarounds to this. Um, we were doing workarounds before. We were using the um, collaborative group tools for certain things, uh, sorry, the, the Blackboard group tools for certain things. And um, staff were using their test courses and uh, creating secure rooms on their test courses and sending out guest links to um, students that were being assessed in order to make sure that if they needed to be recorded the recordings were kept separate and they would be secure and not be shown to everyone else. However that also created a rather large admin, role, um, admin burden on the staff that were already um, going through uh, quite a lot of work. Um, in terms of downloading the recordings and uploading them into Panopto, into the assessment folder in Panopto, because as long as it's in somebody's test folder, no one else can access it. And that includes obviously other people on the module, but also the external examiners. So we needed a, a solution that would allow us to do this. We do have some um, large modules that you know, we're driving this as well. Um, our law students in particular do an awful lot of recordings and um, they need to be stored securely. Um, and during COVID, they had to do this remotely. So we didn't have a system that we could, you know, that we could easily adopt, uh, you know, um, make work for them. So let's get to the fun part. What is the tool and how does it work? So it, it's a tool that allows us to create private sessions for individual students or groups of students that only they can access. Um, we can email the links to students, but we could also set it up as a tool in the menu on the module. Um, we have control of the recordings in terms of whether or not they are viewable for students or hidden entirely and very importantly whether or not they can be downloaded um, as there are definitely situations that where students need to download and edit their recording before submitting them as a final um, as a final assessment. Um, there are great links to the Blackboard groups so if we set up groups in advance then you know, especially on large modules where you might have um, 250 students, but you have 10 tutor groups of 25. Each of the um, each of the tutors can go in and filter just so that they can just look at their own students and don't have to scroll through 250 students to find the right students. And at the end of the year, all the assessments will be archived off um, Blackboard Collaborate once once everybody's done with it. So let's jump into the demo. 
and we've set up a blackboard stage module that we were playing around a lot when we were this was all a part of the panopto process as well so we ended up using this this module for everything um so starting with what staff would have to do you could either go into the um, into the menu and add a tool link if you'd like and there we obviously have the Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, but we also have Collaborate Assessments, and that would be the one that they would need to use in that case. I've already set it up down here as a little spoiler. Um, or alternatively, you could not have a link in the in the menu if you wanted to send out a link to um, to your students only, um, and you would do then you would do all your um, all your admin in the course tool bit. Here you again you have Ultra and you have Black uh, Collaborate Assessments just there but we've done all that for you so here we go um, once you get into the assessment area um, I've already pre-populated this so that we could get an idea of what it would look like um, but usually the first time you come in there would be no sessions here um, you have a create session button over here and it then gives you a list of all the students that are on this particular module in this case I'm going to use myself because I need to demo for you that I can only see the modules that or the, the assessments that I'm invited to. So I'm going to create an individual session for myself first. So I tick myself and I create session. I'm just going to call the session with Helga so that it's easy to spot. Um, series is a well, it, it's kind of like tagging. So it just gives us an opportunity to add a tag to a particular assessment um, that might help find them later and this is mainly for really large modules or for modules that have multiple assessments so that you know that you're looking at the right round of assessments for example so i created two tags already the term two assessments and the term one assessments but yeah you could create anything groups group names or um yeah whatever i'm not going to use it for myself i don't need it for this one um, I'm going to leave it open at the hours, uh, the time that is set up for me. Um, and then we have some options and you'll probably recognize the four that are already ticked, the draw on whiteboard and files, the share audio, share video and post chat messages. Those are the same default options that we have in Collaborate regularly. Um, so those are always ticked as default. The two things that make it different are the, um, the allow recording downloads and hide recordings so allowing recording downloads means that we will allow the students to record uh, to download um, staff will always have access to download the recordings and um, by default that is off um, by default we are showing the students the recordings so they are allowed to see their own recordings or their own group recordings um, however if the assessment requirements were that these were kept completely secret all I'd have to do was tick hide recordings there. Um, and just as with any collaborative session settings, you can um, set the start time before start uh, before you, whenever you want people to be able to get into the room and get ready. And we believe it as 15 minutes. Again, it's for students. They come in, they, they're always participants when they come into these rooms. And um, so if, if they need to present something and upload things, um, we do tell them to come in 15 minutes early, then they can be promoted to a presenter and upload their things. And if I press save, it takes me back out to the existing sessions um, setting. Now, what you will notice is that it's really easy to spot which sessions are live because they have this big green button so you know on a module with again 200 students um there are various things you can do to search for them you can search for dates um, you could search for a student name for example but most of the time you can simply look at active sessions um and, and see quite easily where you need to go um i'm also going to demo the group sessions so i'm going to create a second session and rather than searching on student ID, um, I could also search on student name. Um, in this case, it would be first or last name. It really doesn't like both together. Um, but I could go and search for a group name for one of the groups that we already have in Learn. So in this case, I'm going to use purple because I know that there's a purple group on here and I need to create an assessment. And if I click go on that, that brings me up all the students that are in the purple group. 
Now I can then decide to either take all of them if it's a group presentation or I could take students individually if I wanted to. And I'm going to create the session. I'm going to call it um, group presentation with purple group. And in this case, I know that they had the presentation in term one. So I'm going to give them the tag term two, um, term two assessment so that I know which assessment is this if I ever need to look for it again. I'm going to keep the dates um, default as they are at the moment. And I'm going to leave all the other settings as default for this particular one and just press save. So now you'll see that there are two different um, different icons here. Um, if I now wanted to email the Purple Group, say I'd set this up in advance and I wanted to send them a quick email, um, I can click on the um, little arrow and I can, well, I can view and add participants if I need to, uh, I can still edit the session, but I can email the participants by clicking on there. And the students are, the students that are selected for the session are already default um, as you know who we're sending them to we could obviously take people out if we needed to and there's the text as well for um, what we you know you can change the text you can ask for a receipt um, for the email if you would like and attach a file so I'm going to cancel this because I don't really want to send into the um, big ether this this particular message um, right so that shows most of what the what instructors would be doing. Um, I'm going to change over to student preview and go to collaborative assessments. And this is my my preview student. Um, and as you can see, I can only see the sessions that relate to me. So sessions that I have been involved in. Um, as a student, if there was a recording and it was permitted, then I could watch it or download it simply by clicking on the arrow again. So that's those are the only options the students will get. If there isn't anything, it just disappears. And I could go into the session and that would simply take me into the regular collaborate room. Um, so the student, other than going somewhere else and clicking on a green button, wouldn't actually know that this was anything other than their regular collaborate. And as I mentioned before, students are always participants in here. Okay, so let's go to back to the session. So <laughs> we were in the middle of changing Panopto, from Cultura to Panopto, and, um, and now this tool came in as well. So we were starting to look at what can we do to make it simpler for staff and learning technologists to advise on which set, which tool to use. And we started with something simplistic like this. But as you can probably see, this is not particularly helpful. Um, there's too many things that are the same and don't explain the differences particularly well. So um, we went and drilled down. Um, we started for this. The aim of this was to create a, something for the learning technologies where we could go through. But it actually turned out that if we created this into a decision tree, um, the staff could do it as well, because there are a total of 15 different configurations. And we even found one use case that we really could not provide a solution for. And, um, you know, I've tried to color code it as in the green ones up and off dough and the um, purple ones are um our collaborate so you can see that there's a whole lot oh and the blue one is the group tool as well and then there's some one or two that either can be either system or no system at all they are white so i'd like to demo this for you um if anybody ever wants to see that file they're welcome to email me for it you're not supposed to be able to read everything that's in there um on purpose but let me get a decision tree up for you so the decision tree has a, a, it's got six levels of questions and then depending on the complexity of what you're doing you might be asked less questions so we're going to go through and look at does it need to be recorded and in this case i'm going to say yes it does um is it an individual or group assessment we're going to say group because we want we want to find a a nice collaborative scenario at the end of this um, who's going to be leading the session a member of staff or are the students doing it themselves in this case we're going to say a member of staff the students' own sessions tend to go into the um, they then tend to go into the group to, um, the group part the collaborate tool that gets used in the groups um, in collaborate because students can start their own sessions there and they can't in our in, in the UE tool. 
Um, are the students and the assessors going to be in the same location? In this case, they're not, because this is a hybrid one. And does anyone else need to be present? As, as in, does the class need to see this presentation or not? Um, no, they don't in this case. It's just the assessors and the student. And what level of access is required? So in this case, we're just going to choose that it's going to be secure. It only needs to be seen by staff. And that gives us um, to solution number eight, um, which is the collaborative assessment tool with hidden recordings. So each, you know, at the end of each of the branches ends on this kind of guidance where we have, we explain why, what, what it can be used for. We have a link to the um, guide for teaching staff. We have the link to the collaborative assessment tool guidance in writing and the playlist that we made out of short videos that, um, you know, take no more than 15 minutes to learn every little bit that the staff need to do in order to set up that, that particular um, session. Um, we talk a little bit about equipment and what they could do to prepare, um, what they need to do on the day, um, over here on the right hand side, we also specify which settings they need to use, as in in this case, they needed to click the hide recordings. I don't think that's very visible, but that's for that little, um, that's why it's included in here. And then we also have resources for students, so um, including a, a video for students on how to use the tool, um, how to access their assessments, and um, and generally how to use Collaborate. But we'd hope that the students already know how to do that at this point. OK, I'm just going to get back into our presentation. So as for the future, um, this was a quick solution to fill a gap uh, that we needed during the COVID-19 restrictions. Um, we are using it quite a bit um, because it is familiar to staff. It requires very little support. So as such, we're very happy to continue using it. However, it was always a tactical short-term solution. Um, so whenever something off the shelf becomes available, um, we will probably move to using that provider for a similar experience for, for students. So yeah, that is that is it. And we have time for questions. I haven't overrun. Yay. <laughs> I haven't looked at these sessions at all. Um, completely ignored the chat pane. And 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 that makes complete sense. Thank you, Helga. That was amazing. What it said in the chat was just that it's amazing. Um, people loved the tool. They were really impressed by it. So useful from Chris. Um, so yeah, it's gone down really well. We, Excellent. Oh, yes, thank you for sharing and showing us that. Really appreciate it. So we will take questions. Either raise your hand if you want to ask on microphone or pop them in the chat. And we'll ask them. I've got one already, Helga, from Catherine Leyland. How did you build the interactive decision tree? Oh, that one's easy. That I can answer. I was worried about technical questions, but that one is fine. We use 30 for the interactive decision tree. So we, um, if I just go back a little bit, we structured it first in, spare with me. We structured, set it up in Excel first so that we knew what we wanted. And um, so that is basically the grid of it, if you like. Um, but 30, um, which is a free tool, we use it quite a lot. Um, we set that up in there. So it, it, yeah, it's, it's, it, it didn't take long once we'd figured out how to set that massive Excel spreadsheet up. Excellent. Thank you. I think Mark suspected it might have been Zerti. So bonus point there, Mark, for picking up on that one. And uh, Chris asked a question about how was the tool built? Which a lot of <laughs> Yeah, which is a little bit more complex. <laughs> is it something, um, well, let me cut to the other question now I can see it again. Is, uh, is it something that can be shared with other institutions? Because they love it at Norwich. I believe it is, um, or at least we can share how it's been built uh, in more details, definitely. So it's, 
it's a building by yourself. I don't know, Chris, because I don't do technical stuff like that. However, I have from very serious, um, very reliable sources that it's um, it uses the APIs that Blackboard's APIs. So um, it sits like an extension on top of uh, Collaborate, and I think that's where I'm going to leave it before I re reveal that I don't really know. We have some amazing people in the learning systems team, and they've built it. But if anybody wants to um, speak to somebody that does know, please just send me an email, connect with me on the platform, and um, and I'll make sure that gets forwarded to the right person. Okay. <laughs> Apologies for that, people. I just do the learning. I do the learning technology and the use usability and the use cases. Do you know as well, and, and Helga is co-chair of the Mobile Collaborate user group, which is meeting tomorrow mm -hmm. at 12 noon BST. So we'll be there and maybe you can share more then, perhaps. <laughs> I'm happy to talk about it. We, yeah. The theme is assessments anyway. So, you know, this just Perfect. timed perfectly, didn't it? But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Quick plug in there. And, and Stuart Robinson asks, is there a technical dependency on Panopto? For the tool, no, not at the moment. Um, we ultimately, the, at the end of the year, the um, recordings will get downloaded and probably uploaded to Panopto. They will be taken, you know, they will be archived in some way. And one of the things that we are thinking about whether or not we put it, put them into the uh, Panopto assessment folder. So we're not quite 100% certain on, on how that's going to work yet. But no, at the moment, this is a, a standalone and it, it just works in Blackboard and in Collaborate. Excellent. And um, I don't think we've got any more questions. If you have, then just post them in the chat. We did have a, a question from Stuart about will Blackboard build one? And <laughs> Lena has posted in the chat that she's adding that to the development request list too. <laughs> so, that would make us very happy too if it was just into, if it was Blackboard um, yeah. tool, we would be happy to use it. Yeah, Excellent. thank you very much, fantastic. everybody. Uh, thank you. Very much appreciated there. I don't think anybody's got any questions. In case I've missed any, just pop it back in the chat or raise your hand. Um, otherwise, I think we finished slightly early. Right. OK. Excellent. Well, at that point, I am going to hand over to my colleague, Andy McGinn, to introduce and chair this next session. So, Andy, over to you. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm the only person at Blackboard who only has a tan on one side of the head, and now you can see uh, you can see why. Um, so good morning, everyone. Um, and I really enjoyed that session by Yui. I was uh, the Yui account manager for over ten years and saw all the really interesting things that uh, they were producing. And in fact, I think Yui were the first folks in the UK to do grades journey. Uh, which they half built themselves and half with uh, with Blackboard. So that was a great project to be to be involved in. So on a similar theme of uh, institutions that are innovating uh, using um, partly the tools that we provide and partly their own skill and knowledge and drive, uh, we have Ian and Linda from North East College, uh, North East Scotland College. And what they're going to be presenting on is how they've used the Blackboard debate Blackboard data developers here um, in order to produce their own dashboards. And so um, I think I'm right in saying that Linda is from more of a technical background. She's the Power BI person uh, and Ian is more on the learning technology. So it's having the two of those groups together working really well produces the kinds of results that you're going to see now. So uh, let me hand over. Um, yeah, and we're a whole thirty, we're a whole thirty seconds early, aren't we, Anne? I'm sure I can fill that in with uh, with anecdotes. <laughs> Andy, but, could I just uh, stop the recording and then yeah. start again, uh, just so I can stop and start and break the recording up? Sorry to interrupt you there, but as we've got. Did you do the same seconds, joke about the crown on one side of the head? No, it's fine. 